it's that time of the week again. Ooh. Hello, hello, people. Live long hello. and prosper. Peace. Um, we were just talking uh, before we started recording. I'm going to the planetarium tonight, and as a tricky, <laughs> I, I have an advantage <laughs> over some people. <laughs> they start talking about dark matter and you know, light. Like dark matter. Yeah, to to determine how far a, a star is, you know, you measure the dark, the red shift or the blue shift, whatever. And I like, love it. It's fun. And your fun. shirt, you're, is that what you're wearing tonight? No, actually, I'm gonna probably wear. Uh, I may wear my other Trekkie shirts though. I've got my. Um, Did you say shirt. shirts with an S, a plural? <laughs> yes, I have three <laughs> Trekkie shirts. Actually, I love it. What I've got two. Once with the gold with the uh -huh. Star Trek emblem on it. And oh, yeah, two. yeah. So I've got a captain's and a, a lieutenant commander science. Awesome. So, so it just depends on your mood, like which role you're going to take on. Yeah. I want to be Spock or Kirk. <laughs> or Picard. <laughs> 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 so uh, it is podcast day. Um, Allison can't join us today. She's having internet issues. So we told her we will just run with it and and deal with it i know she's had a rough week at the church we had really kind of a rough week mm. all the way around a lot of stuff going on yeah uh the loss of, of brenda wilson this week yeah so many people needing pastoral care and it's just mm -hmm. been one of those weeks and yes. we're wrapping up lent we've got palm sunday coming on this sunday and we've got so much going on next week. She really needs to take care of herself. She does. So. She does. Uh, she yeah. did not have a day off last week and worked all through the weekend. And um, so, yeah, I hope she's able to rest and restore. She's had a very full week. Very much so. And we had our first orchestra rehearsal for the cantata on Monday. Yay. And my goodness, those people can play. That's so awesome. I was blown away and kudos to Martin. Martin was a little nervous about it because he's not really worked with orchestras before as a conductor. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. So he was worried about, you know, how do I conduct the con the choir with the orchestra? And he, he knocked it out of the park. It was peace cake. Way to go, so, Martin. So, um, Way to go. But we had three violins, viola, cello, uh, oboe, clarinet and th flutes that's awesome with me on the piano and yeah. can i give it away that the oboe player is the pastor at the elk yeah. grove church yeah. i am so loving that how ecumenical this cantata is yes me too and, and we've not got, to she, she's from elk grove church we've got another player from the newcastle church yay so and we've got a couple of singer well one singer that i know of from uh roseville church roseville yeah. And uh, of course, all of our friends at the LDS church. Mm -hmm. So we've okay, got no pressure at all. But I was in a meeting with Blake, the DS on mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, as was Allison. And somebody invited him to the cantata. Huh. And he was like, oh, what time is it? I may just show up, you know, because we were explaining how it was ecumenical. And so no pressure, yeah, but the DS may come. <laughs> well, no, but I've met Blake before. He's a nice guy. Oh, so he's a I'm total, not, total sweetheart. Yeah. I'm not worried about him at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, but I am really looking forward to it. And I cannot wait to hear the choir sing with the orchestra. So nice. we had a great choir rehearsal last night. We've got Monday night again with the orchestra. And then we've got our final sing through. And uh, we'll have the narrators um right now i think we're down to two narrators so, okay if you need a third let me know i'll be there i'm happy to yeah. read if you need somebody well i was going to talk to you about that so um i'll send it over to you and i told okay. allison and um i think it's dave yeah dave at newcastle, newcastle. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i told them to split it up however they wanted to but uh with uh pastor angel i don't think he's gonna be joining us now Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did hear that. So if, yeah. if you would like to read, I would love to. Yeah, read. I'll be happy to. Yeah. Um, So last Sunday, we were talking before, I was really getting into Allison's discussion on social media because um, she was talking about how it used to be you get bullied at school, you get away from it when you go home, but now it follows you on social media. And yeah. it was very relevant to me right now, especially with the death of that young trans person in Oklahoma yeah. with the bullying, the social media. And 
Um, yeah. It's like, wow, that just really kind of hit home this uh -huh. week. Uh -huh. so, and there, mm, I don't even know if we want to open the lid on this, but there are so many reports about how they passed away. Was mm -hmm. it suicide? You know, like the beating that they took didn't yes. kill them, but then it caused them later to take pills. And they're saying it was a mutual fight. And it, it mm -mm. Mm. I, I know. And it, there's mm. so many different angles on this thing, but yeah. Um, and the only people who really know are the people that were there. Yeah, and that's that's the, the yeah. that's just the the truth of it. So yeah, um, you're right. You're I right. hated hearing about it. I but I also understand too that this is not just an isolated issue. It really is. Social media has turned this whole world into. Well, I'm behind a computer. I'm typing. I really won't face any consequences for exactly. saying exactly things. Exactly. Before people come up to you and say nasty things, you could either choose to walk away or you could confront them or treat them with kindness or in mm -hmm. some cases punch them in the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's almost like the bullying is worse at home because the kids at school have to mind their P's and Q's. Maybe they're not in class together or maybe yeah. they could avoid each other, but then it's it's almost worse at home because you're yeah. right. They have that bravado to I'm gonna uh, I remember when my daughter was in fifth and sixth grade and it was just even the little things like let's take a picture of these group of friends together. So the one we leave out sees, yeah. you know, like Molly was left out of a couple of things and it just devastated her because not that they were intentionally being mean, but there's the pictures of all of them together. And, you know, uh, yep. And I know bueno. I think we all go through that at some point in our development as, as a kid and young adult. Yeah. But um, I know I did, you know, when people would exclude me in school. Yeah. 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 I but, know. And even since, um, you know, a weird thing has happened. I'm just going to say it. I don't post on Facebook near as much as I used to. I'll post my kids, you know, brag about my kids or whatever. Um, because I've had people call me out saying, well, you're a pastor. You shouldn't be saying that, or yeah. you should blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's my social time you know but then it was it was almost like I mean I wasn't being bullied I don't mean it that way but it is it, it completely took the fun side out of it away oh, yeah. you know when I ha kept getting criticized for having an opinion on politics or whatever Ooh, so yeah, well, yeah. I just psh, nope nope you've ruined it for me yeah. <laughs> not doing it anymore <laughs> I try to stay strictly on what's going on in my life like important things like concerts yeah uh, yeah uh -huh. church stuff uh giving friends kudos for stuff that's going on with their lives and yeah. wish I always have to go out every morning and check birthdays for the day. I do that. Yeah. I go and look at my notifications. Who's yeah. having birthdays, make a little message and then, yeah. Exactly. So I try to keep that balanced because I do have a lot of different friends across the political spectrum. Yeah. I'm trying not to criticize different points of view. Mm -hmm. I will criticize specific things. <laughs> like, mm, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, I don't and try. There's... I try to keep a balanced approach. I mean, yeah. I think we all should. Mm -hmm. so. And there's a difference between telling our opinion and attacking others. And yeah, there were exactly. times, there was a couple of times that I was out of line, you know, attacking Me too. others rather than just stating my opinion because I was so angry and that exactly. did not serve me well. <laughs> it does not. It does not serve me well either. And I'm trying to keep it because there's so much pressure and stress going on with all of us in our lives right now. So I'm trying to make sure that I am a force for good. Yeah. <laughs> I use my yes. superpowers to help people. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Christy um, Olson is the best at that. Isn't oh, she? she? I is. mean, she is just a ray of positivity. <laughs> she is. She can lighten up any room. She does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always feel better after spending time with her. I do too. I do too. Um, now, this Sunday, we said Palm Sunday, uh, is the shortest scripture that we've had so far for this this series. <laughs> what, it's only 20 lines? It's not even, it <laughs> is one, two, three, four, five verses, John 12, 12 through 16. And Barbara's it's really, getting off easy. Exactly. It's just the, you know, it's just talking about Jesus going into Jerusalem they took branches of palm trees, went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one. Um, talks about him being on the donkey. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's it's five verses. So 
Um, this script, this week's order of service, the script that we put together every week was two pages where it has been uh, almost four mm -hmm, for the mm -hmm, last that's month true. Or so. that's And true. we are doing a very traditional music service this week because I had a couple band members out. So uh, mm. Greg and Damien were both going to be gone. Okay. And Jerry Llewellyn sings in the choir anyway. So I told Bonnie just to take the Sunday off. We'll do a traditional music service. We're going to open with... Um, um, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. And Yay. I know we're not having a children's moment this week, right? Right. We're going to just wave our palms and then scoot our way out. Yeah. Which always okay. works for us because the godly play story during Holy Week is usually a little longer. And yeah. so it gives us a little more time to do our thing with the little ones and the big kids have stuff. We're in a series. Well, the series that we're in now has a youth and children's component to it. Oh. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh. And then we're doing Blessed Is He. Uh, it's a really great anthem for Palm Sunday. I think we've done it quite a few years. Uh, I don't think we've done it since the pandemic. But oh, wow. It's an up-tempo piece, but it's a very celebratory piece about Jesus coming nice. to uh, Jerusalem. And we're doing Precious Lord, Take My Hand is our closing <gasps> hymn. I love that. I do too. Oh, I'm going to miss it. Darn. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's going to be a good service for Palm Sunday. Nice. We go into Holy Week next week. Yeah, breathe. <laughs> but it's it should be based on the choir and the the orchestra rehearsals this week. The cantata should be a piece of cake. And we all yeah. we've done today's services so many years. I think it's right. going to be pretty laid back. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so excited. We're doing a Taze service at our church at six, but um, Angel and I and Martin are going to do one at one o'clock at Roseville. Um, similar service, just one in the day, one in the evening. And um, yeah, it's it. Where's I need to knock on wood, but. You know, Holy Week is busy with services, but there is a lightness to it this week year there is a, a joyful celebratory not stressful component to it this year it does feel that way it really mm -hmm. does and part of mine is getting all these people together from different churches and it feels like a community not mm -hmm. just yeah. us you know yeah yeah i think that's part of it is just having our brothers and sisters from the other churches and yeah yeah and new music okay. we get this whole cantata is brand new for us yeah, and I, the kudos to the exciting. choir. They've worked really hard on learning it. So, yeah. and I do need to talk to Allison because we need to plan out our <laughs> our Good Friday service. So, because there's going to be a piece of it before we start the cantata. The oh, cantata. right, yeah, the actual servicey part of it. Yeah, and there's mm -hmm. nothing in that um sir in the series for Good Friday that I saw. So, it kind of mm -hmm. skipped over Good Friday, went right to Easter. Mm -hmm. Skip so, the scary stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah let's go from waving palms to celebrating <laughs> so um what else do you have going on anything you want to talk about for the kiddos or yeah as a matter of fact you were talking about um the death of the young trans person in oklahoma and um you know there there's been a lot going on in our community somewhat related to that um there was a death by suicide of a granite bay student um that hit close to home to some of the families in our church uh, so on Sunday after church, I've invited the teenagers to come and help me fill Easter eggs for our Easter egg hunt that's going to happen on Easter. But after church, we're just going to sit around and, and have a discussion about that while we fill Easter eggs and, and you know, talk about what's going on in the world, especially with teenagers and how they're doing and, and relating to all that. Um, so I'm looking forward to having some time with them um, yeah. to discuss on our sugar high <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in the world uh yeah and that'll be after church just for an hour it you know depending on how long it takes us to fill eggs and stuff but it shouldn't right. be more than an hour well and that's gonna be uh i i our teens our young people at the church are so i don't know how to put this they are so service oriented number one yeah. but they're also and when we were doing the the um, confirmation class and we did the the last night just before the confirmation mm -hmm. Sunday, hearing what they had to say, their insights yeah. were just 
I would not have been that insightful at 15, 16 years old. No, they are deep and rich yeah. and interesting. And, you know, they ask so many questions. I just, oh, I loved, I loved working with them. Yeah. And it, it blows me away just how, how differently they see the world, number one, Yeah, but also how much compassion they have for everyone, yeah. not, not just the people in the church, not just their own community, but the entire yeah. human community, I would say. Yeah. There is not yeah. one teenager in our church that if, if there was another teen that was having trouble and needed a friend, there is not one teenager that I wouldn't call and say, Hey, could you help this kid out? Or can you, you know, I mean, they are just to say they're good kids is an understatement. They yeah. are like deeply, deeply good. Absolutely. So, and good I, good job moms and dads. I know it's just amazing to me. Um, we do have a few things going on like tomorrow, the 23rd, we're filming on Friday this week, um, March 22nd, but tomorrow morning they have the church work day. Oh, right. That's right. And um, they're serving breakfast. At, at, and I heard donuts from somebody, but I, I don't, may have said that out of turn. Just I hopeful. can't confirm <laughs> or deny anything at this point. <laughs> so, uh, but they do need six to eight people. They're painting two rooms and they're providing all the paint and supplies. Um, so if you've got the time tomorrow, go check it out. Um, we talked about... We talked about the service on Sunday. Uh, UMCOR uh, this month is special offering for UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. Uh, if you want to contribute to that, uh, make your check payable to Loomis FUMC and put that in the memo line. For those who know what a memo line is. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'll say in regards to UMCOR, if you're new to Methodism and you want to know what it means to be a Methodist, go look up UMCOR online. Because yeah. that is how John Wesley and the early Methodists chose to live. And so UMCOR is a beautiful representation of our theology in action. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I, before I came to, to Loomis, I had no idea what UMCOR was. And I think it was Maggie who explained it to me when I first yeah. started. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. um, so we already talked about the Easter egg hunt. Yep, on Sunday morning. I mean, Easter Sunday morning. Easter Sunday morning, nine thirty. During Godly play. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And you already talked about needing to fill the Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. Um, Easter flowers. Um, we we do the traditional Easter flowers. Uh, we for those honoring people who have passed or a special friend or loved one, and we print a bulletin with all the names in it. Uh, and they put flowers in the narthex, not the narthex, sorry, in the in church. In the sanctuary? In yeah. the sanctuary. So uh, pretty. But th yeah, but there's a form in the narthex. Um, the deadline is this Sunday, the 24th. So if you want to be included in that, we're asking $5 for each person listed. And that money helps us pay for the flowers for the Easter celebration on Easter Sunday. Nice. So. nice. I send an Easter lily to my parents every year. Like their church does the same thing. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I fill out their little form and... I used to send my grandmother on my mom's side. I used to send her Easter lilies every year Aww. for Easter. Um, and I didn't realize so many people do that. I think it's kind of a Methodist thing. Yeah, well, I was Pentecostal, but we yeah. didn't get it. She loved lilies. Oh, y'all did it in your church too. Yeah. Well, oh, we, cool. I don't think the church did it. It was just me with my grandmother. Oh, gotcha. Every year I sent her Easter lilies because she loved oh, Easter. Okay. Lilies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's going on? Maundy Thursday, we already talked about. We have the today service at 6 p.m. at the church in the sanctuary. Uh, we have the Good Friday and Cantata service on next Friday, the 29th at 7 p.m. with participants from Roseville United Methodist Church, Newcastle United Methodist Church, Elk Grove United Methodist Church, and the Roseville LDS Church. So, um, and I have family on the east coast who want to watch so I, I told them tune in on the youtube channel so nice and speaking of youtube channel we're up to like 250 something subscribers now on youtube wow and we just keep we keep adding a few stragglers here and there every, every once in a while so that's i think cool. that's great um and of course the easter service march 31st uh, and that'll be streaming as well 
Uh, we have a celebration of life coming up for Dave Drapo on April 13th at 1 p.m. Um, I Martin and I met with with Sandy, uh, not this last week, the week before, mm -hmm. and planned out the music. So mm -hmm. she wanted some, some special music for him. Allison um, and I met with her this week as well. So it'll be a sweet service. Good music planned. Yes, yes. We have a trumpet player coming in to do when the Saints go marching in. We've got a, our drummer, Greg. Um, Okanami will be playing with us Good. and me and Martin. So Good. And uh, Brenda's service on the 6th. Yes, Brenda's Brenda service. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Wilson will be on April 6th. I think At 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't have any other details on that yet. Um, no, so. still too early. Campbell's family, um, part of them live out of town. You know, they're all spread out. He has three kids, two sons and a daughter. Um, and one of his sons and wife and kiddos was going to arrive today. Um, to spend the weekend okay. together so yeah good it's a good time for family to be there yeah yeah for sure uh it's time to register for the next women's retreat on june 22nd um at the auburn retreat center 8 30 a.m to 3 30 p.m lunch included uh the speaker for that one's going to be reverend chris gallagher um so that is six five dollars cast or check made out to loomis uh, register at the table before and after church or contact Clara Bunch if you don't want any more information on that one. Um, I think at one point they were going to ask me or Martin about doing music for that again. Okay. Because so, we had a blast cool. last, what was it, October, November last year? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I missed it because Cooper had a soccer thing, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was good. I mean, I heard good things about it. Oh, we had fun. We just came in, did our thing and left <laughs> the only two men allowed in the building <laughs> so um good friday we ever talked about good friday. oh kairos cookies those are due april 7th um there was a powerful video last sunday during the announcements yeah. that maybell henry introduced and i thought that was wonderful mm -hmm. so uh mm -hmm. talking about what it means, what the cookies mean. They called them the 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 uh, prisoners called them uh, Jesus cookies. Yeah, yeah. Where do you even get that. the Jesus cookies? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really really nice. Yeah, and I think I brought this up before, but my my middle brother Craig is in prison, and he loves this kind of stuff. Mm. So um, I think this is very important to them, and is one of the the ministries where you're i'm very proud of our church being yeah, involved in, so. absolutely i mean there, right straight out of the scriptures you exactly know, just, yeah exactly so to me this is very important but they are asking for cook for cookies there's information in the lantern but they are due by uh, april 7th which is the sunday after easter so there's very specific you can't put raisins or other dried fruit no sugar no frosting on the top that kind of no sprinkles no razor blades. No razor blades. Uh, yeah. So, and they have to be a certain size now too. It looks like two, yeah. to two inches. Yeah, like a a small cookie. Yeah. Not a bite size, but a yeah. two bite. Um, and then there's information about the golf tournament coming up on April. What is that? Twentieth. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Check in at seven a.m. So that, sh that should be fun. And uh, they've been doing a really good job of promoting that during the announcements too. So especially Duke is the Geta. best man. Uh -huh. His jokes off the cuff are pretty darn amazing. So Brother Patrick came on the podcast last week, Patrick Aiello, and talked to us about the Rise Against Hunger. Uh, that's coming up, the event on Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. till noon. They have low registration this time around. And low donations. Yeah. So um, I guess we need to get the word out. And I don't yeah. know how, how to best do that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a special invitation to the youth. Uh, part of the issue, just because my own kid, but I know others too, that is like end of soccer season into tournament season. And, you know, that's that's where we are every weekend. And I know a lot of other kids play. Uh, although I don't think water polo is going on right now. Volleyball. Um, yeah. There's several sports you know, kind of concluding before the, the end of the year. And so I know our kiddos are super wrapped up. Yes. Uh, track meets. Yeah. Well, they also said that the event will cost us $8,300 for materials, logistics, and overhead. So far, we only have about 6,500. So if you can't volunteer, donate. Um, so 
I think this is an excellent cause and Patrick has, has been working on this, I guess, since the beginning, since we first started doing it. He's yeah, years it. ago. Yeah. And it's fun. It's a really fun event. It's fast paced. They usually, you know, have fun, loud music playing and the gong every time you get to a thousand meals. And it's a really, really fun. Like it doesn't seem like you've been there for three hours. Yeah. You know, it passes really quickly. Yep. So, uh, yes, that is, uh, important. And if we can support it, we should, uh, we got the craft fair coming up on May 4th from 10 AM to 4 PM. Um, more information for that. There's an email address in there. And I forgot the person's name. Who's leading that up clock lady 20. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. From the life center. It's yes. a, it's a life center sponsored thing. Um, but they're going to give the money to the food pantry. Yes. So if you're interested in that, you can set up a booth in the parking lot for 50 bucks. All the proceeds go to um, benefit the Loomis mm -hmm. Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. Sheila. Um, Sheila's the Sheila. one from Life Center. Um, and I think that might be all that I have. <laughs> That's it? That's it. <laughs> There's something every weekend. And I know, and you know, I, we, we joke about it, but I feel like we're, we're getting into Holy Week next week. I feel like we just finished Christmas. <laughs> I know, yeah. So time is flying by. There is a disturbance yeah. in the space time continuum, <laughs> people. So. <laughs> and next year, Easter isn't until like April 20th or something. Like as late as it can be. Oh, so, well, that's good. Then we'll have extra time. Next yeah, we'll have another <laughs> month, you know, in between. And, you know, honestly, I love doing the Christmas cantatas, but I think the, the Good Friday cantatas are my favorite. They seem to be the mm -hmm. most meaningful. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um i i don't know we've we've been talking about what to do for cantatas going forward we've had a little bit less uh participation singers mm. the last two mm -hmm. and i don't know what that is about but mm -hmm. um i think we'll have probably have 25 26 singers what we were originally were expecting between 40 and 50 mm. okay um so that's a, a bit disappointing but they still sound amazing yeah, um, but yeah. then the Christmas before last we did one, and it was the same thing. We had very low turnout for singers, mm -hmm. although I think this time around we're going to have fewer than we did then. So, I think Christmas is so hard because of all the secular stuff going on and parties and gifts and ugh, all the and, stuff about Christmas. Just and it, that was, it robs the church of it. And that was kind of the first Christmas after the pandemic where people were traveling again. Yeah, so right. Put a lot of that into in that consideration too. Yeah. So, um, but I think we need to look at because we talked about we can't do two cantatas a year anymore. It's just too much between yeah. Christmas and Easter. There's not enough time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we we're trying to determine if we're going to do an Easter cantata one year, Christmas cantata mm -hmm. the next, or do we just do Easter cantatas going forward? Because those mm -hmm. seem to be the best attended and the most meaningful. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. we're going to spend our money, I would rather do it on the things that are that are the mm -hmm. most meaningful and plus we've got a lot of participation because not very many churches do good friday services yeah yeah mm -hmm. I'm, you're right I'm kind of blown away about that and i think mm -hmm. doing this and bringing all these churches together and in, in this ecumenical medical mm -hmm. uh way mm -hmm. sorry senior moment um <laughs> it's it's to me it's been really part of what's made this whole Lent season special. Yeah. I think it, it's also good for all of us as we come together. Like obviously that spreads out, uh, for like a better term, the work, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when we're all pitching in together, it's not up to one church to just provide everything, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're supplying people and extra pastors and, you know, um, yeah, I think it, it fosters an environment of celebration rather than have to, to do list, you know, that sort of thing. And I really have enjoyed it. I I love getting to know Pastor Angel. I'm looking forward mm. to getting to meet um uh, Dave from Newcastle. Yeah, he's I don't wonderful. think I've met him before. He is so wonderful. He's so much fun. And sadly, he's going to Galt. He's um oh. he's yeah, leaving Newcastle July 1st and going to Galt. Uh and he'll be great there, but we love having him in our circuit and yeah. you know, he's a great guy and he's become a good friend. So we're really going to miss him. 
Well, and I'm looking forward to getting to know him a bit. Um, and April, she's a hoot. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed meeting her on Monday. Uh, we've got some brand new people. Um, the cello player, Celia, and her nice. boyfriend, Mike, he plays uh, clarinet. They're both in the orchestra cool. and they were just wonderful people. And, and where are they from? Um, I uh, are they from they're not from april's church no okay. uh they play in the orchestra with alice jacobs one of the orchestra oh okay so maybe alice recruited him yeah she did gotcha. I, just, okay. I just can't remember if they were part of a church or not but okay uh, uh they were wonderful and nice. amazing players um and she was uh celia was very apologetic she said i've only been playing cello like five years i'm mostly a guitarist <laughs> she knocked it out of the park she was <laughs> So, well, what I've learned about all of you musicians is you're very self deprecating and you're like, no, it could have been better. No, I'm not. And then you all perform beautifully. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I know I do because I know also my shortcomings, especially reading music. I'm not as great as I should be. Uh, what? Um, music, but <laughs> uh, Monday night was the first time I'd seen the, the new. So, for those who don't know music, there's what there's called um, a piano reduction score, which is all of the orchestra parts written as a piano score. Okay. And you can't play them all unless you have 20 fingers. <laughs> so that's what so we So you did. use your toes? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but they they give you that so that you know what's, what's playing where and when, blah, blah, blah. But also gotcha. to do the vocal rehearsals, you need to know everything how everything goes together so i've been playing from that for the vocal orchestra for the vocal choir rehearsals and for the first time on monday i saw the piano score oh gosh. that's the one i asked to borrow your computer to print oh yeah 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 okay so i was sight reading the entire thing i was thinking oh i can do it it's much different than i expected so i was like oh <laughs> no but it was fine we got through it and i knew the music well enough it it, it was fine so, but it's beautiful. Yeah. I think everybody, and you, you will recognize a lot of the hymns that are incorporated nice. into it. It's uh, Joseph Martin, right? It is Joseph Martin and Bradley. Love Nicks. him. They are. Yeah. They, I don't know Bradley Nix, but I know Joseph Martin. I love his stuff. Well, and they both wrote different pieces of this. So okay. there's, there's old hymns like near the nice. cross. Oh, um, uh, what's the Jesus lover of my soul. Oh, yeah. Some of the oldies. Yes. So Yay. they incorporated those themes into this entire thing. And it's beautiful. And the orchestration, I'm just so happy. I could Yay. I could rant about that for... <laughs> I'm um, glad you're happy with it. Better than being like, oh, this stinks. I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> yeah. And the singers, they're doing really well. They're working really hard. So it's going to be fun. Uh. We got a list of joys and concerns, and let's just say there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot. Or just shoot. Yeah. Um, well, let's, well, let's start at the top. Polly Dye, she had her back procedure yesterday, and the joy is she's doing well. She's feeling much better, but right. keep her in prayer as she as she's healing because she is good. She's had a a rough few months. Yeah. Is Hal here? I don't know. I think she, I think he is. Okay. Um, yeah. I, she, I think he was back for this. Okay, but okay, I'm, I can't be one hundred percent sure. Somebody can yeah. correct me if if I'm not. But okay, uh, Linda West had a surgical surgical procedure scheduled for Tuesday, the twenty sixth, so next Tuesday. Uh, Debbie Stogner has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i've talked to her several times and and she's progressing with it i mean uh in her acceptance of you know of yeah. having to deal with it so yeah. yeah uh dennis elliott um had his other he had another cardiac event last week he was back in the hospital mm -hmm. uh he did talk to martin yesterday or wednesday and said he won't be there this weekend but he wants to be back for the cantata he really wants to sing okay good so, um, I'm hoping that he's able to make it. Mm -hmm. um, Judy Connor. Yeah. It just says Judy Connor. I'm not quite sure what's. She is still, I think they moved her to the rehab unit. Um, okay. Yeah. Not yeah. much of an update, honestly. Okay. So, um, yeah. Fred Berryman, of course, is in um, the last stages of uh, congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. uh, 
The Delores friend, Debbie Newton, was released from the hospital, but then she was taken back uh, with a new medical issue by ambulance. Um, Barbara Williams' grandson, Frankie, had a TBI and is suffering with extreme pain. Oh, no. Yeah. I hadn't uh, heard that. Uh, Wait, what's TBI? I'm not thinking of what not that is. Sure. TBI. I was, I'm assuming it's some kind of infection. TBI. But... Huh. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, of course, the sorrow of Brenda Wilson passing away on yeah. Monday. And I heard that yeah. was pretty unexpected. Happened yeah. To... You know, she's been struggling for a while, but um, even in Campbell's words, I've talked to him a couple times this week, and, and he said, you know, it, we always knew she was having issues, but we didn't know end of life issues. Yeah. You know, he was very surprised. So oh. we all love, I told him we all love you and support you and whatever you need, you know, but I think it's so hard to know what you need in that first week or two of just shock. So you don't, yeah, you know, right. we've all been through that, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's just hard. Yeah. You just kind of go on autopilot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, and I, even when my mom passed, I just went into, I went into work mode. I was project manager, man. Project oh, manager, right, Ray. Right. Okay, yeah, we got to do yeah. this, got to do this. And then you forget to eat. Uh -huh. Yeah. You forget there's other things that you have to take care of. So uh -huh, uh -huh. I, my heart goes out to them. Yeah. Um, we do have some joys. Elizabeth Jared celebrates her daughter Jen's um, bone marrow transplant 21st anniversary. Yay! Um, the Faith Garden team celebrated successful work day last Saturday with planting planned for early April. Nice. And the food pantry benefited from the recent Boy Scout scouting for food event with 100 bags Dang. of food donated. Wow. Oh my gosh, 100 bags. That's huge. Way to go, Boy Scouts. And there's a prayer shawl blessing. It just says today. I'm assuming is that Sunday? Are we doing prayer shawl I, on Sunday? I ha that I don't know. That's the first I've heard of it. Okay, um, but we have if they're up there on the alt or on the chancel, then yes. <laughs> you know how they have them up. You know, yeah, they'll bring them up. I don't remember if they were up there last night when I was there or not. I was focused on mm -hmm. other stuff last night. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, but cool. All right. Um, anything else that you want to ask prayer for? Not at the moment. I can't. Mm -mm. I would ask for prayers for my um, my aunt Beverly. Mm. He lost um, her husband, my uncle Butch, last year, and then she lost her son two weeks ago. Oh, so he I'm had so a heart sorry. attack. Uh, we originally thought that he had fallen. Somebody said that he had fallen and hit his head, but apparently the cause of the fall was a heart attack. Oh, okay. So the fall was just, that's just what happened, but yes. it was really a heart attack. Yeah, okay. Heart attack. I'm sorry. And that's your cousin, right? Yeah. My cousin, okay. Brian. I'm so and sorry. They're, they're not dealing with it very well. Mm. He was, so 50, was he 57. Oh gosh. That's what I was going to ask. I bet he was young. Uh, yeah. 57. He was one of my, I want to say older cousins. I'm the oldest of the cousins. Okay. Okay. I was the first grandchild. I'm special. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Um, I, I was spoiled as the first grandchild. No, what? Yeah, there were 30 something of us, I think. Oh my gosh. A, so. Well, I'm the only granddaughter on either side of the family. My mom's or dad's side, the only girl. So I was maybe spoiled a little bit too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I think we have both, I, we both turned out fine. <laughs> sure we did. <laughs> We're just a couple of princesses over here. <laughs> yes, we are. We are. Uh, but um, yeah, they're they're having a hard time with that. So, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, was he married? Had kids? He was married. I think this was the second marriage, and okay. did, he did have kids. So, okay, okay. And you know, it's so coming from such a large family and being uh, the oldest. I moved away when a lot of these kids were growing up. And yeah. I do have some, he was one of the adopted cousins. There was a blended family. Okay. Um, and that family had like eight or nine kids. Wow. Okay. So um, I didn't get to know him that well. I saw him at family gatherings in the eighties, but I had already moved to Atlanta. Oh so yeah. With him like the others. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's a lot of cousins I have on that side that I barely know. I know them 
their name. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh -huh. I don't know was that much about them because I just yeah I spent as much time makes sense. Them. Yeah, you were already doing your life. Yeah, and again, I was the oldest, so I left, and yeah. as they were growing up, they were really close to my brothers, but mm -hmm. not to me so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just keep them in prayer. They're having a rough time. Yeah, I've talked to my cousin Janie, his his stepsister, and uh, they're just having a really rough time. So, would you lead us in prayer? I'd be happy to. <laughs> Loving God, it's Friday. Thank you for another week of your blessings, even though it has been a tough week. We are continually amazed and grateful for your presence and your loving arms around us. We feel you as close as the air that we breathe. Guide us through this week as we begin Holy Week, that we can renew ourselves in you, our souls, our hearts, our minds, to serve the world in the way that you need us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. We amen. can check off another podcast. Amen. What are we on? 70 something? Uh we're in the somewhere in the 70s. Yeah, I think like 73, 74. Awesome. So, yeah. Let's we've start been, accruing those retirement benefits. I know. We've been going for like a year and a half now. So, what? so it's going and I think it goes well. We have a lot of people at the church every Sunday morning. Oh, I watch the podcast. I love what you, you guys are laughing, blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> You guys are so goofy. We're goofy. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I'm really happy for the people who turn tune in and listen to us ramble. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, Thank you for loving us anyway. <laughs> I, I watch some of the, the episodes because I always check them out before I upload uh -huh. them. And sometimes I edit little things. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> right. um, but I watch them. I go, oh my gosh, I talk a lot, don't I? <laughs> we all do. You know, that's the thing. You can't shut the three of us up. No, that's the problem, I guess. <laughs> and if we had Martin on here, good Lord, we would be I talking know. for hours. I'm really <laughs> shiny today, too. I took my walk just before we <laughs> recorded the podcast. So, You're glowing. I'm glowing. I'm glowing. <laughs> so um, I will see you... The Sunday. Sunday. I was thinking, is there anything else this weekend? No. I know, right? Like, what do we need to be at? What are we forgetting? I know, but um, I will see you then. And okay. um, keep Allison in, in your prayers today, people. Yeah, She's absolutely. Week, so. Yeah, yeah. And we love her. So. Yes, we do. We miss you, Allison. And, Get uh, some we'll, rest. We will chat when I see you Sunday morning. Okay. Bye.